Hey there, bees. It's Bumble Boy. Um, we're back with another episode of the Casual Cast series. So I'll just be watching the full game uh, here and uh, just doing some sort of casual commentary, talking about other stuff, um, and just having a good time, uh, just relaxing. Uh, I know I wasn't didn't put out uh, videos for the last couple days. That's because I was trying really hard uh, between school um, and moving and starting a new job um, to try and gr also grind and make my way into the Mecha Cup. I was really close. Uh, I was number 180. Um, needed to be top 160 to make it. Uh, and I don't I don't think I'm going to get off the wait list, so not going to try and get into the Mecha Cup this time, but I might try and go for like the last chance qualifier or something like that. Um, we can go ahead and get this video started while I talk about this. Um, but I've just been really busy. But I'm gonna try and be more consistent with my with my uploads. Oh, let's turn off the Becca's noise here. Um, so this game, um, I saw it was I think a eight star guardian game. Uh, I played this a little while ago. If you play eight star guardian, you can put the and you get the spat. You can uh, put it on either um, an Aesol or a misfortune, and it's really good on both of them. Um, and I watched a little bit further in this game to see what Becca does. Um, and she gets a really interesting setup um, with 8-star Guardian. Something kind of disgusting, to be honest. So I'm excited to, to cast this game. Um, because I, I don't think I've played this particular line before. So I'm curious to see how she goes and does about it. Um, I think she's... I want to say Becca is Grandmaster at the moment. Maybe Master... I don't quite remember, but Becca usually floats somewhere around, similar to where I do. Um, Grandmaster range, usually sometimes Challenger. Um, and she's got a great stream, I'll make sure to link it um, in the video description. Very entertaining. Looks like she might have moved. Um, or is at least in a different room. I don't know. But I hope she's doing well, and I hope she's got a, a good game for us today. Um, so we got a, a gadgetine open here, opener here. Uh, we've got the shroud. I kind of wish the the gadgetine shroud is really good later in the game, of course. But I kind of wish you couldn't roll it early in the game, just because it's not it's not super great early. Um, it's not super fun either. So yeah, if it's me here, I'm taking Star Guardian Crest, no matter, pretty much no matter what. Heart Crest has really bad stats at the moment. Nice Edge, also not very good. Not very many comps that can use it very well. One of my favorite augments of all time, Nice Edge, but just not very good in the current meta. Um, especially because now Duelists, you play more backline carries like Twisted Fate. And it, yeah, you focus on Twisted Fate and Vayne, both of which are... Twisted Fate doesn't really even want Knife's Edge. And Vayne, you know, you don't really want to be putting her on the second row. So, yeah, Knife's Edge has gotten a little bit sad, but hopefully it's a little bit better next set. I love those. Some of my favorite comps of all time are those uh, stacking melee carry units. Like, Jax, when you could still infinitely stack, I really liked him. Um, one of my fa absolute favorite comps of all time was, I think, set... Oh god, what was it now? Probably set six trundle, maybe set five, but the, the junkyard trundle. Where he would steal AD from people that he bit for the, the rest of the combat. Uh, and you'd go uh, the triple cloak build, the runans, QSS, bloodthirster build. Boy, I love that. Um, I hope something like that returns. Let's see Lulu pulling out the win here against somebody who leveled to four. I don't know why you leveled the four with preparation there. Uh, it seems like an interesting decision because usually with preparation you're probably not winning because you haven't been able to use preparation on your units yet. Um, so you're playing down a gold augment um, for a little while. And you just want to chill and let your boys, you know, cook in the oven. Uh, so I don't, I don't know about that level there, but... Becca shows them why it's not a good idea. <laughs> Defeats them. Underground player, another preparation player. Interesting. I think with Star Guardian Crest, you usually want to shoot for 
playing like quick draw Kaisa style comp. And um, I was actually doing a video earlier on a Setsuko game where he was playing uh, with the Star Guardian Crest as well. Um, and he just played the, the Kaisa comp plus an MF with uh, the Star Guardian Crest on it. Uh, the reason that video uh, didn't get finished is because uh, I forgot to turn off my Discord sounds and I didn't want to you know, get flamed by the internet for the rest of time <laughs> for putting up a video with Discord sounds in it. Um, then, yeah, the, the, that flaming would be justified as well. So, uh, yeah, we decided to go ahead and do... Uh, Go ahead and give it another try, and uh, I've, I've played uh, Misfortune Star Guardian before, and I saw this uh, comp with Star Guardian of something else, so I wanted to I wanted to see how good it was. Um, this person is sacrificing their Lucian to get the lose streak, get that build up that econ. Reroll Lucian still really strong in the meta. Um, I did manage to climb a lot with uh, playing Reroll Lucian, even without the Hero Augment. I think it's getting... I think I heard I was getting gutted on PB. Uh, probably Kaisa as well. Quick Draw definitely overbuffed. It's, uh, Trey's definitely a bit too strong at the moment. Um, Lucian's still a bit too strong. I hope they don't hit it too hard, because I do really enjoy playing that comp. I do really enjoy playing Kaisa, but... I wouldn't be too surprised if it gets hit. Um... A little too hard in the next patch. That just is how things tend to go. They, you know, you overbuff something, you overnerf something, and then you find some sort of like a happy medium eventually with it. It's just, you know, how balancing tends to go, especially in a game where the, the balancing is as touchy as um, when like TFT or just small numbers changes can make all the difference. And speaking of that, the, uh, the meta at the moment, has kind of been ruined by whoever discovered Hacker LeBlanc. <laughs> I think uh, it was probably mainly brought over to NA from China would be my guess, and the reason I say that is because there's a Chinese player who I think was number two on the ladder um, a few days ago who was only playing Hacker LeBlanc, who was just hard forcing it uh, before everybody caught on. And once everybody caught on, now there's like two or three people playing Hacker LeBlanc every game, two, and usually one or two people playing Hacker Gnar, um, and then maybe one person playing Hacker Warwick, and now it's just it's just hackers everywhere. Um, it's really just um, a really mentally taxing meta to play in at the moment, I would say. There's a lot of... There's so many things you have to account for with positioning in particular um, that's really difficult to position correctly every turn um, at a high level, because if you think about it, uh, the biggest defenders, especially in the late game, are um, Hacker, of course, uh, there's uh, Fiddlesticks, uh, there's Urgot, um, there's things like Viego, uh, there's things like um, yeah, Aurelian Soul, because, and what I mean by that is that with like Fiddle, Aurelian Soul, um, Viego, you don't really want to clump. Um, with Urgot, you don't want to be the same side. With Nico, you don't want to clump and you don't want to be on the same side to avoid getting hit by the third bounce. And then with Hacker, you want to be in the third row and you want to have some tanks or some people to draw attention in the fourth row. Um, uh, preferably a Morgana in the in the fourth row to try and stun the Hacker for a little bit. Uh, you want to try and play a Shen um, to try and get that invulnerability on your carry while the LeBlanc is blasting away. And usually when you're playing against, um, and of course Garen, I shouldn't forget Garen, uh, he goes on a lot of endgame boards, and what's really frustrating is not positioning for Hacker, because that's not too bad. What's really annoying is when you've got like one or two Hackers in your pool, and then you've got some other people playing like Garen's um, and like Twisted Fates in the other parts of your pool, and you don't want your carry to be closer to Twisted Fate, because you could randomly lock onto it and delete it. Uh, you don't want to be closer to Garen, because you'll get stunned, and that stun will probably change the whole fight. Uh, so, playing... positioning for Hacker um, will usually get you griefed in your other matchups, and positioning for those other ones will usually result in the LeBlanc instantly targeting your carry and murdering it. So, it's just really 
it's really frustrating to try and position correctly for everything at the moment, I would say. Uh, but, um, back to the game. We've, uh, managed to find a few Star Guardians with our Gadgetine opener. Um, it's just been a, a strong opener in general. It's managed to win streak fully with it, despite not slamming every possible item. These items are a little bit interesting. Not a lot that you'd want to make with the belt that's already slammed. I'd probably make a spark here. I know you're playing Gadgetine and sometimes you get spark, but it's not consistent and it's a very strong item. It's trying to play 4 Star Guardian here. It's a pretty good board. Um, it's probably a little better than Gadgetine. I'd definitely make the spark. Ooh, makes the dual gauntlet. I don't know if I would have done that. I think I would have preferred to make the spark here to try and use a cloak. Um, is it going to probably slam Dragon's Claw would be my guess? Yeah, okay. I think this is fine too. Um, because uh, the Jewel Gauntlet is not amazing here because Lulu doesn't have anything increasing her AP from traits or anything like that. So, um, the crit is not amplifying that much damage. By the way, if you hear a little bit of knocking, sorry about that. Um, I think somebody's nailing something up upstairs. Uh, it shouldn't be too intense. Alright, the augment here. I'm probably just taking Thrill of the Hunt. Um, from these ones, maybe Phony is fine. Components, also fine. Um, I probably would have just taken Thrill of the Hunt for a little bit of healing. I think these are all fine. Scoped, scoped weapons is what the chat wants. They, I think they, they know that it's wrong. Uh, grab bag, so we find Echo here is really nice. I'd be tempted to move the Star Guardian emblem over to Sono, to be honest. I think it might already be better. More swords here is not really what you want to see playing Star Guardians, but you can make it work. There's not a whole lot you can do with the cloak or the sword, like the, this many swords, so maybe you just end up slamming of a Lithurster. Um, cause like you can use like one sword maybe for like a shojin, and then like maybe another for a gunblade probably, uh, but I, I don't know what you do with the cloak, and the chances of getting both those items aren't super high, cause you've already used up one rod. So I'd be kinda down to slam like a bloodthirster on the, on a frontliner here. Got this big egg. I had a game the other day where um, from the carousel we got a big egg, and then from the next carousel we got a little egg, and they hatched at the same time. It was really bizarre. <laughs> and I kind of, uh, it kind of griefed the reroll players a little bit, uh, because they they just lost two, <laughs> two bench space for like, uh, for a little while, um, which is pretty funny. I know there's some people who really don't like the egg uh, carousels um, because they make it so it ruins like if you're counting on getting at least one gold from the carousel to make an econ breakpoint um, in terms of getting like a one cost unit or two cost unit or three cost unit it can mess that up um, and it can also mess up your bench space if you're trying to reroll so some people really don't uh, enjoy the eggs I don't mind them um, for the most part uh, they haven't really Messed up my game plans too much. And really nice change here that they made. You saw that that Lulu casted her ability without having to walk all the way up. Uh, it's a welcome change that would would have been nice if it had been implemented a long time ago, to be honest. Because um, the way they changed it at the start of, like I think, 8.5 is that if Lulu had full mana... Um, but couldn't reach her target. Uh, she just wouldn't cast. Yeah, that was that was, that was that's how it was throughout the entirety of set eight, I think, because uh, there was the whole problem with the rapid fire cannon. You put that on Lulu, and then she'd have longer attack range than her her spells range. So she'd just sit there auto attacking with the rapid fire cannon, never casting her ability, which was very silly. Um, 
and I think it was good that they removed the rapid fire cannon from the gadget team pool because uh, it's not very good on any of the units. Um, now what it does, now what Lulu does is she'll cast her ability when she's at full mana, even if she's not in range. And I think she they made it so that she would cast it by walking up into range to cast it. And now I think she casts even if she's not in range and it just it hits the target anyways. Um, which is a very welcome change. Is looking here to see what Star Guardians are there. What would it look like to play the full Star Guardian board? I don't see very many people. Uh, first, nice as this tool is, the main thing I see people use it is to check the weather. Uh, when you're at a part of the stage where you can't see the weather icon, for example, on the carousel or the, the augment selection. Um, I don't see that many people using the team builder, but I, I actually think it's a pretty nice feature. Um, I wish it didn't take up like the whole screen when you were using it, but it's understandable. There's not a ton of UI space, so... I think it'd be nice if there was like some sort of smaller version, like maybe where you could like click a list of champions and see how the traits shook out. But yeah, these items would be pretty good on Kaisa, so I'd probably switch to Kaisa already uh, over Lulu here. Personally, uh, she's thinking about it. I think Lulu without a mana item is not amazing, especially at this stage in the game. It's probably gonna have to roll pretty aggressively on seven to upgrade the board. Doesn't have, doesn't have a lot of upgrades. It's still carrying a one cost. All right. Just thinking about what to put in that last slot. Lenum. <laughs> what is his name? Lenum. I don't know why that makes me laugh, but there's something about it. It's, I think it's supposed to be like lemon, but the N and the M are mixed, are, are uh, swapped. I don't know, something about it just makes me laugh. This person is so sad, they haven't finished their Lucian. They're on like 0 gold level 5 at 3-6. They need to hit pretty soon if they won't have any chance to top 4. Crack open that egg. What do we got? Some gold and uh, an anvil. Not bad. There's the Aesol, one of the two best holders of the Star Guardian emblem, in my opinion. Just, the spell is just so good if you repeat cast. Alright, I like it. Um, I probably would have held on to the anvil personally until after the, the wolves. Um... I know it's taking up bench space, which uh, could be units from these orbs, um, which will turn to gold if you don't have the space, but I don't think it matters that much. Another Star Guardian emblem. Star Guardian Garen is also pretty good, because um, his spell is so powerful. If you get Star Guardian Garen on the right side of the battlefield, you can get off like three or four stuns and win you the fight by himself. I like the Shiv here. Um, it's a good item on Kaisa, and it gives you the magic shred that you're lacking at the moment from not building the spark earlier. Oh, and here's the menace. The lady who ruined the patch. The LeBlanc. I don't know if I finished my thought earlier when I was talking about uh, LeBlanc. Yeah, there's a there's a rank 2 players only playing LeBlanc, um, who I think is a Chinese player because they have CN in their name. Um, so I think it came over from China. Naturally, they're the ones that figured out how to abuse uh, the strongest traits in the patch. In this case, Hacker. Okay, what do we got here? My Sword of Zero Shield is pretty good. Especially with the Star Guardian emblem, but I'd probably roll for either a Misfortune Augment or the Aurelian Soul Augment. The Aurelian Soul Augment is actually really strong. Um, this is a support augment. I like the carry augment a little bit more. Um, but I can see this being really annoying um, with the support augment because it stuns and be casting so often. I could see this being really powerful. It probably is even better in this situation. I 
We'll see. I, I I bet this yeah yeah somebody in the chat's saying it perma CC. We'll see if it just stuns the board forever. Let's see how good this is. And here's a NAR player, another menace. But not playing hacker, playing Oxforce NAR? Remember you just haven't rolled for hacker yet? Their HP is pretty high, so I guess they haven't really been forced to. Definitely a bit of bit of a weird composition. I think hacker is extremely valuable on NAR. I don't think trying to skip it would be very smart. Because Nar's not very good at getting through tanks, but he's extremely good at killing carries. I, uh... I, I think I was the one playing 3-star TF where I saw 3-star TF that just got murdered by a hacker Nar. Um, and it was really tragic. <laughs> uh, you, you hit your 3-star 4 cost and then you just get murdered by a 3-star 3 cost. Feels bad. Same thing happens with LeBlanc. Uh, she's... Quite silly. I'm not sure how that will be modified. I was asking another friend of mine who plays in decently high elo um, what they think uh, the balancing team will do about this sort of hacker problem that we've run into. Because um, they already made the trait require all three hackers to play it, which is a pretty significant nerf. You can't really increase the trait breakpoints anymore because there's only three hackers in the game uh you could add i guess you could make it so you can only play hacker if you get an emblem but that'd be pretty silly because i don't really think the omnivamp's really even the problem because like on hacker nar like it's just 10 percent omnivamp um i mean hacker nar more the problem there is more with gadgetine being too strong um 30 damage reduction 30 damage increase that's if you look at the overall damage differential there it's better than ascension which is uh 50% damage increase. So I, I don't really know what the balancing team is going to do about Hacker. Um, I think just the, the ability to get into the backline is the most powerful part about it. And they've already taken a pretty large step to reduce the, the ability to play that. Um, maybe in this is head, <laughs> it's going nuts. Um, because they could nerf LeBlanc and Gnar, um, but I don't I don't really like the idea of nerfing those units because then they become useless outside of hacker compositions. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to see how they'll solve that problem because it seems like a, a really tough one. Uh, what are they missing here for Star Guardian? Because they've got the... They've got the Lux... Who's missing here? Are there any more one cost? No. Two costs. There's Rel. Three costs. There's Nylon. Kaiso. Oh, they're missing Nico. Or Aura Syndra. All right. Let's let's actually let's take a close look at this uh this Ace Hole. Cast once. Cast again. Oh yeah, that's that's pretty gross. <laughs> And the Star Guardian Garrett, so it's just, oh my goodness, this board is, is quite silly. I would be quite frustrated playing against this, <laughs> unless I had a QSS, and then I'd be like, okay, things are fine, but... Checking out the damage chart, seeing that Garrett is actually doing a fair share. Might have just whacked my mic, my mic there, I apologize if I did that. Still getting used to trying to hold the mic in like a good place for recording. Um, it's uh, not a skill that comes naturally. I like this board. I like how there's just a bunch of Star Guardians and there's a dragon and a big mech boy in the middle. I think I think a really insolent Garen would make good Star Guardians. Uh, Garen, Garen's got the morality for it. Um, and Aurelian Soul is just kind of he's just kind of cool. I th I think they should give him a, a Star Guardian skin. None of the meteors landing on the LeBlanc, but if he casts one more time, it should be okay. Yeah, okay. It's a little scary. 
you saw that LeBlanc had an edge of night, and some of you might be a little confused by that, because you're like, hey, that's an AD item, why is it on LeBlanc? But it's actually really good, because the thing about Hacker, you go to the back, right? And usually your units have already targeted something by the time the Hacker is riding, so they don't get immediately targeted, the Hacker. Um, but if they do start to get focused down, that's how you can lose the fight with when... Um, Let's say you've got a Shen in the back, and that's what your Twisted Fate locks onto. And you kill the Shen, and then you'll turn towards the closest, the next closest target, and that'll be the Hacker, the LeBlanc. So if you use your next ability on LeBlanc, you could end up killing her before she kills you. Um, so putting the Edge of Night on LeBlanc allows her to survive being targeted by the backline and buy even more time as they retarget onto something else. And usually with LeBlanc, you're trying to kill the most important target in one or two casts, which is why you don't see her uh, people putting a lot of mana items on her. Um, because you don't really want to be repeat casting, you just want to murder the most important targets right at the start of the fight. That's what makes LeBlanc so powerful, um, is the, the fact that Hacker targets those powerful units um, at the start of the fight, and the fact that she can do so much damage. Not only that, but... Um, LeBlanc gains more sigils, like her ability just continues casting basically if she's killing things. So the more AP she has, that's essentially like building mana in a way, because she'll be casting more often. Um, she'll, she'll, she'll be continuing the same cast is what I should say. And just look at this Aesol damage and look at those casts, it's just every, every three autos. It's nuts, the board just disappears. This is what I mean. You can see the Lucian board um, had, was clearly positioning for Hacker, uh, clumping the units and also putting the carries on the third row, but playing in something like Aurelian Soul, if you clump your units like that for Hacker, you're just going to get destroyed. Um, so you're kind of one of those situations where you're doomed if you do, doomed if you don't. And you just got to hope you fight the right matchup. Becca's just chilling here. Could probably go for like three star Aesol, three star Garen. Um, I think she's deciding to go to level nine rather than a slow roll on eight, which I think is fine. I think both decisions would be reasonable. Um, Garen's a pretty contested unit, so three starring him is pretty hard. Aurelian Soul's not, so you could probably three star Aurelian Soul pretty easily, and that'd honestly be pretty valuable because a three star Aurelian Soul probably has too much HP for the hackers to kill uh, effectively most of the time, especially with a healing item. This person does have a 2 story soul on their board though, which would make it a lot harder to find 3 story soul. And I think LeBlanc wins this one. Yep, too much healing. Yep, and that damage is just nuts. It's not even three star LeBlanc. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the balancing team will do about this. Um, you can nerf LeBlanc, make her unplayable unless she's being played in the hacker composition. Um, with Gnar, I think the problem is more the backline access and the gadgetine uh, damage reduction and damage increase. So I think you could just nerf gadgetine there and that would probably solve that problem. But, uh, Hacker's just inherently kind of a problematic trait, unfortunately. That's okay. Um, you know, we'll see what they do. I hope that... I guess the first two days of Mecha Prime Cup are gonna be... LeBlanc, the, uh... The LeBlanc, uh, lottery. LeBlanc and Gnar, which is uh, not great, but uh, the two, the final two days of the Mecha Cup should have a slightly different meta, because there should be a patch, not this week, but next week, so in between the two, uh, the two sets of tournament days. Okay, we got a carousel here. Edge of Night is also even it's good against it's good on LeBlanc and it's good against LeBlanc. Um because obviously it gets her off your carry. 
So Edge of Night has become has suddenly become a very highly prioritized item uh, over the last like, couple days in this patch. It's amazing how like quickly the meta can shift once somebody discovers something uh, that the rest of the people aren't quite abusing as, uh, as hard as they should be. Goes to level 9. Probably wants to find Syndra. Could even itemize a second Aurelian Soul here for even more stunning. I'm not sure how helpful that is versus hacker player the hacker players though. I think you really want either things that are gonna like beat the hackers away. Um Echo's also actually pretty helpful for that. Um when he uses his ability he taunts, so he can draw the LeBlanc's fire. Let's see if he if he does it here. So he's taunted and now you can see she's she's going after the Echo instead now. Um, and he ate a, he managed to eat a full cast without giving her any extra sigils. But I don't think it's gonna be quite enough here. I think this LeBlanc cast will finish it off, yeah. And these are pretty much perfect LeBlanc items. Uh, the only thing that might be a little bit better here it depends on the admin. If they have an AP admin, then the JG is fine because you're multiplying some of the AP from that, and you have an Archangel, so that helps too. Um, but otherwise, Rabbitons is probably a little bit better. There's the Syndra. Syndra is very good for helping to cap out a board. Um, Lux is probably the weakest unit here. I don't think you really care about Spell Slinger on a one star Nico and a Lux. You don't really want to be playing Lux on your final board. Not a very high value unit in the late game. So now. Got the Hacker Nar player in the pool and then everybody else. You just gotta hope you're not playing as Hacker Nar. Oh, this person actually took the Aesol carry augment on this board, which is interesting. This is kind of just a hodgepodge board, making putting things together, trying to make a top four out of it. Oh, it's not hodgepodge, never mind, I'm sorry. This is uh, built different. But definitely still a smear augment would have been way better on this board. I'm surprised they don't have one. I guess because they were playing built different and probably didn't tailor their board before the last augment, they probably just offered random stuff and took the first good thing they could find. Fair enough. Um, depending on your win streak situation, it's probably better to tailor your board with at least two traits before the the last hero augment, especially if it's a or before the last augment, especially if it's going to be a hero augment. Oh, Becca's selling here to move items i don't know why precisely here moving the items to echo i agree with rebuilding the aurelian soul i don't entirely understand i feel like the healing item was totally fine as opposed to the archangel um but this is okay as well i guess um Really hurts your chances of getting a soul 3 star later in the game. I guess Becca just wants to try and kill the board as fast as possible with these double chalice plus archangels and jewel gauntlet. Um, I don't know if I like that play, but it's something that you could do. Um, it's a fiddle. Fiddle's probably. Well, Urgot's probably pretty decent with Star Guardian for farming items. At this stage in the game, though, he might just be getting deleted. We'll see if he manages to get casts off. I've never seen an Urgot with a Star Guardian emblem, so I'm very curious to see how good it is. Yeah, see, this in this situation, I think he might just get popped. We'll see. Actually, though, he stacks the mana so fast. Wow. Where did that LeBlanc go? Wait. Yeah, they're pinging. Like, what? What? What just happened? I, I'm also curious what happened. Does she just get unlucky and get hit by two meteors? Oh, get hit by two meteors and the the Syndra cast. So that's just kind of some bad luck. Uh, for the the hacker player, but uh, you know, I don't have a lot of sympathy for them. 
22 damage. <laughs> They're not very happy about the, the outcome there. You know, it, uh, it kind of warms my heart, to be honest, to see uh, a hacker player just get a little bit destroyed. No, I think Bex is just trying to roll for some sort of... Trying to roll for Cinder 2 and then a 2-star Legendary to throw these the Star Guardian emblem plus a uh, Gunblade on. I, I like moving the gear into the back line to make it more likely to cast on the hacker unit. So Nara's got to make it through a wall of units here. Never mind. Uh, they walk up and then Nara lands right on top of the dragon, unfortunately. Um... Yeah, see that right there is uh, where you'd prefer, I think, to have Gunblade over the Archangels versus the Hacker, because usually the Hacker fights are over pretty fast. So I feel like the Gunblade is probably better to keep your carry alive over the Archangels, but I'm not sure. Gnar definitely wins this. Uh, Becca doesn't have enough damage left on her board, I think, to defeat the Gnar. Uh, what's the John? I don't remember. I think it must have been Sunny. Star Guardian Jauna sounds pretty good. Especially against these hackers. Um, because the tornado will hit the closest target and knock them up. Jauna ults the, the largest clump of units. Um, so, even if she's not hitting the hacker itself, usually I'll... On the way to hit the largest clump of units, it'll still knock up the hacker. Decides to go for the Zeke Sanjana instead. I think that's fine. Um, I think I would have preferred Star Guardian Emblem a little bit here over the Zeke's. Uh, I don't think the Zeke's is that valuable on Aurelian Soul and Jana, and I think the getting the tornadoes to knock up the hacker is probably a little bit better. But I think this is acceptable. And a two-star Mord with Star Guardian Emblem plus a healing item would probably be a menace too, but not very good against these hacker players. Because he's usually good at wiping large clumps of low to mid to low HP units. He's not good at dealing with singular strong units. I think one of the best units to counter... Um, not really to counter, but to deal with hackers um, is Twisted Fate for sure. Um, because he has such high single target damage um that if you can position him correctly even a one star tf can can wipe a two star hacker grabs a shojin yeah i think putting it on syndra is significantly better um it's another a soul can't really fit it in yeah, I, I think moving the items here is fine. Um, it's okay. I, I think they might have actually been better on Kaisa versus the hacker players because she has good single target damage, but this is still okay. I don't think Nico's doing a whole lot versus these guys. And Aesil's doing his best to try and stay alive here with the stuns and manages to keep that Gnar down. This time. And now you've just gotta bring down the the true monster, the LeBlanc. Now that you're playing against just the LeBlanc, you can position just for her. So what I'd be doing is I'd be putting a lot of my carries up in the front, especially because you've got so much uh, AoE damage. Um, I don't think it matters that much that you're putting your units close to the front, because those other units aren't going to be killing your ASL. Um, they're probably just going to be feeding him mana, if anything. This positioning is okay as well, uh, a backline clump. Um, here, I'm probably trading the Garen with the, uh, with the Syndra. 
Maybe not actually, because she'll get by the LeBlanc. Or not the LeBlanc, the uh What's her name? The Sona. I'd probably put Syndra where Nico is and then put uh Nico in that back corner, because I think Nico does the least in this matchup. But it manages to pull this one out. The LeBlanc can't quite get to the Aesol. And it's very it's a pretty clean game from Becca. Um and we see here that Aesol with Star Guardian Emblem is pretty strong, especially with his support augment, the, the stunning one. Um, even though Aesol is, is more of an AoE damage champion, uh, Becca still manages to pull out the win versus all these hacker players, which is pretty great. Um, I enjoyed the game a lot, and I hope you did too. I'll make sure to drop a link to uh, Becca's stream, as well as the, uh, the VOD from the VOD library itself. Alright, have a good one!